Hey everybody, in this AP Chem series video, we're gonna take a look at the effects that temperature can have on pH. First, remember in a prior video, we've already seen a little bit on this auto ionization of water, a reaction between two water molecules that gives us some really important relationships between the H3O plus and the OH minus concentrations, all based on this KW value. One of those relationships is the fact that a neutral solution that we think of as having a pH of 7 is going to have equal amounts of H3O plus and OH minus. So let's start off and take a look at some of the thermodynamics of this auto ionization process. The first thing you need to know is that this is an endothermic process, meaning heat is absorbed as the reaction takes place. That means I can actually put in the word heat on the reactants side to represent that. Now that I know that, I can look at some of the effects that a change in temperature is going to have on this equilibrium system. At higher temperatures or lower temperatures, the equilibrium and the Kw itself are going to shift accordingly. You might remember this in the study of Le Chatelier's principle. For example, if I was to raise the temperature, now that I know heat is being absorbed on the reactants side, that is going to cause this equilibrium to shift to the right. Since a temperature change is taking place, that's also going to change the very value of K and the increase in the concentration of products will cause the K value to increase. Which is why if you look up the KW value at say 35 degrees Celsius, that's a higher temp. So we have shifted to the right and increased our value for KW. Here it would go up to about 2.1 times 10 to the minus 14. Of course, that effect is going to continue if we went to even higher temperatures, like here at 40 degrees, the Kw is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 14, and the opposite would be seen if we checked the Kw at lower temps. So why do we care? Why does this matter? Let's take a look at some of the interesting effects of this by calculating the pH in 40 degrees Celsius pure water. Remember, it's pure water, so we're expecting a pH of 7. So let's maybe start off by setting up a quick little ice table here. Initially, I have no products made, zero, zero. As we approach equilibrium, I'll be producing equal amounts of each product. So once equilibrium is achieved, I should have equal quantities of H3O plus and OH minus. Next, I'll take that equilibrium row of the ice table and plug it into my K expression along with the value for KW itself. We end up with an expression that looks like this. I'll finish and solve for the value of x by taking the square root of both sides. So my final answer here being 1.7 times 10 to the minus 7. That is the H3O plus concentration and the OH minus concentration. If I am trying to calculate the pH, of course, then I need to take the negative log of the H3O plus. So negative log of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 7 which gives me a final, final answer of 6.77 for the pH. So the pH of pure water at 40 degrees Celsius is 6.77. That should seem pretty weird because this is pure water. It is neutral with equal amounts of H3O plus and OH minus, and yet the pH is less than seven. This gives rise to two important conclusions. One, that neutral solutions will only have a pH of exactly seven, when the temp is 25 degrees Celsius and the, the temperature and the neutral pH are going to have an inverse relationship like here at higher temps, the neutral pH is dropping and the opposite would be true at lower temperatures as well. These ideas make up some of the key ideas for this video. Make sure to pause and take some time to write those down. Let's try and apply this with some practice. You can pause the video, read this question and try it yourself before clicking play again to watch the answer. Let's take a look at how we would answer this question. First of all, my temperature is raised, so my Kw value is increased to 5.47 times 10 to the minus 14. The pH comes out as 7, so the student concludes that the water is neutral. First of all, for part A, we should be disagreeing because a pH of 7 only corresponds to a neutral solution at 25 degrees C, and here the temperature is up at 50. We could even go a step further and say that because the temperature is increased, my neutral pH is going to have decreased somewhere less than 7. So the fact that we are getting a pH of 7 tells me that this solution is actually basic. Now let's do part B and calculate the OH minus concentration starting with that pH formula. It's because I know the pH is 7 so I can plug it in and solve for the H3O plus concentration. 
If I do that, I find that the H3O plus is 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Now that I know the H3O plus concentration, I can plug it into the equilibrium expression. Remember to use the new K value, 5.47 times 10 to the minus 14, since that's the temperature my water is at. This makes the final hydroxide concentration 5.47 times 10 to the minus 7. Don't forget capital M for molarity. And that also wraps it up for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and here is a brief summary.